Hello and welcome to Science Monitor, our weekly update on what's happening in the field of science and technology in and around the country. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor. Let us begin with the headlines. Nobel Prizes for the year 2014 awarded in Oslo. The first and second orbit raising maneuver of GSAT-16 successfully performed. Global mortality due to malaria considerably reduced. Scientists discover new class of potent anti-malarial molecules. Researchers of IIT Madras develop a novel and effective way to produce safe drinking water. And in today's In-Depth, we will discuss the institutes working in the area of renewable energy resources to find sustainable alternatives. And now the news in detail. One of the most prestigious recognition in the field of science is the Nobel Prize awarded each year. This year, Nobel Prizes for all the categories were announced during October and the award ceremony was held recently in Oslo on 10th of December. In the category of science, Nobel Prize in Physics, Chemistry and Medicine were given this year. We bring you a detailed report about the scientists and their contributions who were awarded with this much coveted prize. Come October and the world eagerly awaits the announcement of the most prestigious prize awarded in the field of science, the Nobel. As it happens, annually while the Nobel Prizes for 2014 were announced in October, the prizes were awarded in a grand ceremony held in Oslo, Norway on 10th December. Outstanding researchers in different fields of science were recognized for their outstanding contributions. The Nobel Prize in Physics 2014 was awarded jointly to Dr. Isamu Akasaki of Nakamura Maijo University, Dr. Hiroshi Amano of Nagoya University and Dr. Shuji Nakamura of Randall Lamp for the invention of efficient blue light emitting diodes which has enabled bright and energy saving white light sources. The Nobel Prize in Chemistry 2014 was awarded jointly to Dr. Eric Bedzik of Matt Staley, Dr. Stefan W. Hell of Max Planck Institute and Dr. William A. Moena of Stanford University for the development of super-resolved fluorescence microscopy. The super-resolved fluorescence microscopy techniques allow the observation of many biological structures not resolvable in conventional fluorescence microscopy. The technique also helps image three-dimensional structures. The Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine 2014 was divided. While one half was awarded to John O'Keefe of University College London, the other half was awarded jointly to the scientist couple May Britt Moser and Edward I. Moser of the Norwegian University of Science and Technology for the discoveries of cells that constitute a positioning system in the brain. The Nobel Prize in Literature 2014 was awarded to Patrick Modiano for his book For the Art of Memory. The Nobel Peace Prize 2014 was awarded jointly to Kailash Satyarthi and Malala Yousafzai for their struggle against the suppression of children and young people and for the right of all children to education. ISRO's communication satellite GSAT-16 has been successfully placed in its orbit. The satellite was launched from the spaceport of Koro in French Guiana using European Ariane 5 rocket on last Saturday. GSAT-16 is carrying 48 transponders which will be used for communication and providing TV and radio services along with large-scale internet and telephone operations. Adding another feather to its cap, ISRO has successfully placed its communication satellite GSAT-16 on its orbit. The satellite was placed on its orbit after three orbit-raising maneuvers by firing GSAT-16's LAM engine. The first Apogee maneuver firing was successfully completed a day after the launch of the satellite. The liquid Apogee motor was fired for a duration of 6,081 seconds, consuming 877.6 kilograms of propellants while the second orbit-raising operation of GSAT-16 was successfully completed by firing the Apogee motor for 2,203 seconds on 9th December. GSAT-16 is the 11th Indian communication satellite. The satellite, which weighs 3,150 kilograms, aims to enhance the satellite-based telecommunication, television, radio and internet services in India. The satellite with 48 transponders is the largest ever carried by a communication spacecraft built by ISRO. 
GSAT-16 was launched on 6 December from the spaceport of Kourou in French Guyana by the European Ariane 5 rocket. The 48 transponders of the satellite are aimed at boosting public and private TV and radio services and large-scale internet and telephone operations in the country. Malaria is one of the deadliest diseases known to claim the largest number of human lives every year globally. However, the recent WHO report on malaria claims that about 43 lakh people could be saved from malaria during the past 12 years. According to the report, the scale-up in technology to effectively control malaria and rising awareness among the public has resulted in considerable decline in mortality due to malaria. Let's take a look at this report. Malaria is known to claim millions of lives annually across the globe and is considered a major disease burden in many developing nations, including India. However, according to the recent World Malaria Report 2014, published by the World Health Organization, the scenario in malaria control looks highly hopeful. According to the report, the number of people dying from malaria has fallen dramatically since 2000 and malaria cases are also steadily declining. The report also says that the malaria mortality rate decreased by 47% worldwide and by 54% in the African region, where about 90% of malaria deaths occur. According to the statistics, between 2001 and 2013, about 45 million people living in sub-Saharan Africa could be safe from malaria, 39 million of whom are children. According to Dr. Margaret Chan, WHO Director General, the considerable decline in mortality due to malaria can be attributed to scale-up of technologies to effectively control malaria, increasing political commitment, regional surveillance and development of national and international economy. Malaria is an infectious disease caused by different species of parasitic organisms belonging to the microfamily called Plasmodium. Commonly, the disease is transmitted by the bite of an infected female anopheles mosquito. It is crucial to note that malaria is a major disease burden in developing nations across the world. According to estimates by the World Health Organization, half of the world's total population lives in the shadow of this infectious disease and 3.2 billion people in 97 countries are at risk of malaria, of which 1.2 billion are at high risk. In India, the disease burden due to malaria is felt most among the tribal population residing in the jungles of Orissa, Jharkhand, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh and the northeastern states. Simple measures of mosquito control, which also involves the use of mosquito nets and insecticides to control mosquitoes, can go a long way in controlling the spread of malaria. In recent years, access to accurate malaria diagnostic testing and effective treatment has significantly improved worldwide. With the use of effective vector control and efficient treatment, an increasing number of countries are moving towards malaria elimination. In 2013, two countries, Azerbaijan and Sri Lanka reported zero indigenous cases for the first time and 11 countries succeeded in maintaining zero cases. Another special and encouraging news about malaria, a recent research published in the prestigious journal Nature Communication states that the researchers have discovered a novel and potent anti-malarial molecule and this molecule's efficiency to fight malarial parasite in animals has been successfully tested. Let us see the report. While we all can cheer the decline in mortality due to malaria, in yet another encouraging news, an international team of scientists have discovered a new class of anti-malarial molecules. The team of researchers from the Drexel University College of Medicine in the US, which includes an Indian origin scientist Akhil B. Vaidya, has claimed that the molecules have shown a high level of potency against human malaria parasites in animal trials. According to the study published in the journal Nature Communications, the new compound, known as pyrazolamides, were effective against both the parasitic species that cause human malaria, namely Plasmodium falciparum and Plasmodium vivax. The newly discovered pyrazolamides affects the sodium control mechanism of the parasite. The Plasmodium parasites invade the human red blood cells and mature inside them. During this process, they change the permeability of the membrane around those cells allowing the intake of large quantities of sodium salts, leading to a sharp increase in sodium levels in the red blood cells. 
However, the parasite itself controls its sodium level through a molecular pump mechanism. The newly discovered parazolamide affects this molecular pump as a result of which there is an imbalance of ions inside parasitic cells causing it to swell and burst. In addition, the new compounds have an activity against the mature sexual stages of P. falciparum. The parasite's male and female forms mate after being ingested by a blood-feeding mosquito. Inhibiting the production of these sexual stages would help prevent onward transmission of the parasite by mosquitoes. One of the new molecules has been identified for further development as a candidate for anti-malarial drug. The discovery of this new class of anti-malarial compounds offers a huge hope for new drug discovery. This is important as most of the existing anti-malarial drugs are stopping to work as the parasites are developing resistance and it is clear that it is essential to develop novel anti-malarial drugs to eliminate malaria. Currently, silver ions are being used in many water purifiers available in the market as it has the capacity to control bacterial growth. Now, researchers of IIT Madras have developed a novel technique using a new compound which is thousand times more effective in destroying bacteria and viruses present in water than the silver ions. The technique also offers a hope to reduce the quantity of silver used in water purifiers. Here is more. Clean and safe drinking water is essential to healthy life. It is well known that many of the deadly diseases are waterborne and in this context, purification of water plays a major role. Silver ions are known to have antibacterial and virucidal properties and are usually used in water purifiers to destroy bacteria and virus. Now, in a major breakthrough, a team led by Professor T. Pradeep of the Department of Chemistry, Indian Institute of Technology, Madras, has advanced this technique to purify water multifold times than previously. The team of researchers have developed a combination of silver with carbonate ions which reduce the bacteria by 100,000 times and virus by 1,000 times in drinking water. This is an advanced method based on a purification procedure using only silver ions which the team had developed earlier in 2013. This technique could achieve 100 times reduction in bacterial load and negligible reduction in viral load through sustained release of 50 parts per billion of silver ions in drinking water. This new technique is based on the use of silver and carbonate ions. The carbonates and silver ions were released into water at the same time but their contact areas with water were controlled by controlling the size of the particles. Carbonate particles the size of sand gets dissolved more quickly than nano-sized silver particles when added to tap water. The carbonate acts and removes the peripheral proteins of the microbial cell while the silver destroys the integrity of the cell membrane and also damages the DNA, thus killing the microbe. The team has tested the antibacterial and antiviral effects of E. coli, Staphylococcus aureus and MS2 bacteriophage. Both bacteria and virus were destroyed within 15 minutes of contact time. The new technique offers hope for making drinking water a lot safer by killing an overwhelming number of bacteria and most of the viruses while reducing the amount of silver used. And now it is time to take a short break. We'll be right back. Keep watching Science Monitor. Energy is one of the crucial requirements for a nation's progress and needless to say that the currently used sources of energy are not enough to fulfill the rising demands of growing population and development processes. In this scenario, there is an urgent need to resort to eco-friendly, renewable sources of energy. What are the steps the country is taking in this regard and which institutes are involved in the discovery of alternate solutions? This will be the topic of our discussion in today's In Focus. Rapidly deteriorating environment and climate change is today a huge concern worldwide with serious scientific, social and economic dimension. With the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change recently issuing a warning 
calling for immediate ban on fossil fuels, considering their effects on the environment and concerns regarding rapidly depleting energy resources, the world is looking towards sustainable alternate solutions. In this context, research and development in the area of renewable energy resources has become crucial. Renewable energy resources like hydro, wind, geothermal and solar energy have emerged as eco-friendly sustainable solutions to the energy crisis the world is facing currently. The Ministry of New and Renewable Energy of India has been supporting research and development in this area by taking major steps towards tackling the issue of sustainable energy solutions in the country. According to existing records so far, renewable energy projects with an aggregate capacity of about 33,200 megawatt have been installed in the country which includes 22,168 megawatt of wind power, 2,870 megawatt of solar power, 4,225 megawatt of biopower and 3,938 megawatt of small hydropower. Numerous academic and research institutions, autonomous organizations and industries in the country are involved in the development of technology to harvest renewable energy sectors in our country. National Institute of Solar Energy, established in 1982, is located in Gurgaon, Haryana. The institute has been established with the aim of assisting the implementation of Jawaharlal Nehru National Solar Mission. NISE function as the Apex National Center for Research testing and technology development in the area of solar energy. The center focuses on research on solar photovoltaic, solar thermal, energy storage and solar resource assessment. The second premier institute involved in the research of renewable energy in India is the National Institute of Wind Energy located in Chennai. The institute actively supports the wind power sector in the country and is involved in the development of technologies for harnessing and using wind energy. NIWE also collaborates with many national and international organizations for the research and development in the area of wind energy. Sardar Swaran Singh National Institute of Renewable Energy located in Kapoorthala, Punjab is another leading research institute of the country involved in the design, development and implementation of sustainable energy resources, especially bioenergy. The institute focuses on R&D development of bioenergy, biofuels and synthetic fuels in solid, liquid and gaseous form for transportation. The institute is working towards development of new technologies for effective utilization of different types of biomass. With the integrated efforts of such institutions, the country is expected to soon be a champion in the area of use of renewable energy resources. It is also the need of the hour that the world recognizes the potential of eco-friendly and sustainable renewable energy resources to meet the growing challenges of energy demand. And what are the contributions of science to this week's history? We shall learn in our next segment, History of Science. On 16th December 1901 was the day of the birth of Margaret Mead, an American anthropologist. Most of her research is based on the interrelations of the cultures of America and the West but she is especially known for her studies in tracing the development of the non-literate people of Oceania. On 17th December 1931, the first Indian Statistical Institute was set up in Kolkata by Prashanta Chandra Mahanalombas. This outstanding foundation has proved to be useful for the progress of the country. On 18th December 1958, the world's first communication satellite was launched under the project SCORE, that is, Signal Communication Orbit Relay Equipment of the US Army. A tape recorder was sent through it, which was used to broadcast a recorded Christmas greeting to the world from the US President Dwight Eisenhower. On 20 December 1890, Jaroslav Herovsky, a world-renowned scientist, was born in Prague. He was awarded the Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 1959 for his discovery and development in the field of polarography. Polarography is used to determine the current flowing in any solution as well as to analyze the changes in the potential.
Let us now have a look at some important science and technology activities happening in India and abroad in our segment, Science Express. Marking its 50th Foundation Day, Devi Ahalya Vishwavadhyale Indore conducted a three-day international workshop on science and technology of free electron laser. The workshop, which was organized during 4th to 6th December, saw the participation of many national and international experts who spoke on various aspects of free electron laser technology. The undulator technology developed by DAVV in this context was well presented during the workshop. Prominent speakers like Dr. Gautke and Dr. Pant spoke of the Indian synchrotron facilities and the work being carried on in this area in the country. The Indo-Japan Joint Working Group on ICT, which recently met in Delhi, has proposed Indo-Japan cooperation in cyber security and green ICT. It has been decided that India and Japan will work on five key areas of research in this field. Some of the major projects to be implemented under this venture as India-Japan joint projects starting from 2015 include Green Mobile Base Station Project, Japan-India Combat Span Project, Cooperative Project for Detecting Symptoms and Quick Response to Cyber Attacks, ICT Use in Disaster Affected Areas Project. Both countries will coordinate their activities for taking these projects forward by involving industrial partners. In order to promote the use of solar energy in the country, the government is planning to launch a new program that aims to promote rooftop solar system across the nation. The program called Grid Connected Rooftop and Small Solar Power Plants program is aimed at installation of rooftop solar systems from 1 kWp to 50 kWp capacity in residential, commercial, institutional and industrial buildings. The program has a provision of central financial assistance of Rs 24 per watt capacity of the system. The proposal is currently under consideration in the parliament. Krishi Vagyan Kendras have been playing a major role in providing technological assistance and resources to farmers around the country and contributing towards better agriculture. In order to continue and strengthen the existing Krishi Vigyan Kendras and establishing new Krishi Vigyan Kendras, the government has approved a budget of Rs 5,739.56 crore. The scheme envisages continuation of 630 KVKs established till the 11th plan and the establishment of 121 new KVKs in the 12th plan to carry out its wide range of activities so as to meet the technological needs of the farmers. The new scheme also aims to promote the use of information technology tools to advance agriculture and reach out to farmers. In an exciting new discovery, NASA's Curiosity rover has found new evidence of water on Mars, indicating that Mars must once upon a time been suitable for microbial life. The data collected shows that rivers once flowed into a lake or lakes at the bottom of Gale Crate present on Mars. Studies by the rover also suggest that Mount Sharp and Mars has been built by sediment deposited in a large lake bed over tens of millions of years. Well, that is all for this episode of Science Monitor. Do tell us how do you like our program. You can also send your feedback and suggestions. Our email ID is news at vigyanprasar.gov.in. You can also write into us at vigyanprasar C24, Kutub Institutional Area, New Delhi 110016. That is all for today. We'll be back with fresh new stories on science and technology again next week. Till then, stay tuned and think scientific.